Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be providing an update on the bear market resistance band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, before anyone freaks out too much by the name, part of the reason I'm calling it that is to put everyone's expectations in check, okay? For me, the definition of being in a bull market or a bear market is not anything more complicated than being above the bull market support band or being below it, okay? Now, there is some subjectivity to other definitions of bear markets, right? There's, you know, market structure breaking down uh, or other things. But for me, if, if, you know, if the price of Bitcoin is correcting 50% over multiple months, I don't personally call that a bull market. Now, some people might. And that's fine. If, if they want to call it something else, that's fine. If they want to just look at it and say, well, you know, they still think Bitcoin's going to be trending up with time, which I do agree with, we can still have bull markets and bear markets mixed into a much longer move. Okay. So for me, 2019, that was a bear market. The, the second half of 2019, Bitcoin dropped over 72%. I don't look at that and say, oh, my, my Bitcoin's down 72%. It's a bull market. I'm feeling bullish. No. I felt it was very bearish. Okay, we, we woke up one morning and the entire asset class was on 60%. That's not a bull market, my friends. That's a bear market. Okay, so 72% drop over, over eight months or something. To me, this is a bear market. 2018, obviously, was a bear market. It lasted for a year. Okay, this one was, this one was brutal. This one over here in the summer. I have a video on the channel back in May. And I said, let's just call it what it is. <laughs> it's a bear market. I said, it's a mini bear market, probably gonna last three to six months. And it lasted three months, but I said it was a bear market. And of course, people don't like that. But I, I do wanna just, I, I think everyone here would be much better off just sort of calling it what it is than, than trying, to, trying to call it something else, okay? So my definition, it's my channel, right? I'm allowed to have my definitions. My definition of a bear market is Bitcoin below the 20 week and the 21 week EMA. 20 week estimate, 21 week EMA. For me, it's not more complicated than that. I understand that we could easily make it more complicated than that. And there's probably some merit to doing so and talking about it in the form of market structure. But after being in this market for a long time, you know, I've seen a bear market that lasts a year. I saw this one that lasted eight months. We saw this one that lasted three months. I'm not going to sit here and be overly deterministic about anything with regards to what Bitcoin can and cannot do in terms of a bear market and a bull market. Could this bear market last another month? It could. Could it last another six months? It could. We'll talk about, you know, we've talked about plenty of times what I think is, is the likely scenario, but you need to be aware that right now, if Bitcoin is, is, is dropping, you know, 50% over two months, to me, that's a bear market. And we will not be in a bull market until we get back above the 20 week estimate, all right? It's as simple as that. Now, now that we got that out of the way, for whoever's still here, um, the 20 week SMA is at 51.1K and the 21 week EMA is at 47.3K. So it more or less ranges from 47 to 51K. Bitcoin needs to rally $12,000 just to get back to the 21 week EMA. And if we did do that, which there's a chance we could, I mean, even, even in prior prior moves to the downside, you can see that we do tend to get rallies back up. I mean, look at look at what happened in 2019. We broke below it. We rallied back up to the bull market support band. We even did it already once uh, when we went back up to 52k. Then we came back down, and then we rallied actually above it. Right? I mean, I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't that throw a wrench into the whole into the whole thing? Right? If we, if we rallied back above it, like uh like early 2020, and then we capitulated to give you an idea of how painful that would be. Uh, and would certainly keep us on our toes. Just to just to overlay this, because I, I know some people might not might not know what I mean here. Imagine Bitcoin did something like that, and how brutal that would be. Like a, a rally here, back up to like 53k or something, and then to see it, you know, dump down to 20k, which happens to correspond to the to the 200 week SMA and the and the fair value logarithmic regression band. That'd be brutal. That'd be absolutely brutal. Um, but let's just, you know, I, I think it's better off just calling it what it is. And with that said, too, I will remind you, I say this every time Bitcoin is, is bearish, 
you don't have to tune into the, into the Cryptoverse every day. You don't. But I will say this. The people that stick around, even if it might get worse before it gets better, the people that stick around, they will have the most to gain during the next mania phase. Okay? So if you leave, which is completely fine, if you don't want the volatility, because we could go a lot lower from here, but if you don't like the volatility, you're welcome to, to leave. Okay? You don't have to stay. But I will say this. If you leave and then you come back nearing the next parabolic rally, don't, don't whine about the people who bought at the local bottom or whatever it ends up being because you would have had the opportunity and you squandered it by leaving during what's normally the scariest time in crypto, but also the best time to buy in crypto. Okay, this is what we've seen before. It was the best time to buy when we dropped below it in March of 2020. It was the best time to buy in, in the summer of 2021. It was also a relatively decent time to buy in the end of 2019 at 7K. Technically, we did drop another 50%, but who's whining about 7K Bitcoin now? I bet any one of us would have loved to go back in time and, and purchase a ton of Bitcoin over here if we were not able to purchase it for here for whatever reason. Just say, you know what, load up at 7K and you're still going to see, you know, basically a 10X happen. All right. So could we trend down for a while? We could, but the people that stick with it, I do believe, um, will we'll do the best. Now, in terms of a timeline, because everyone always asks me what my timeline is, and I've, I've said it every video for the last, I don't know, 10 videos, but I'll say it again. My timeline on seeing an end to the current bearish phase with the information that I have now is within the first half of this year, okay? I'm leaning towards Q2, to be completely honest. Like, I'm leaning towards Q2 over Q1, but what would make me change my mind on that, just so we're clear, would be if Bitcoin has a massive capitulation like in the next few weeks. Like if, if Bitcoin does something like something crazy like this and then bounces out of it with a ton of volume, there's a good chance that's the bottom, right? There's a really good chance that's the bottom. And you're not going to see me saying, oh, no, it has to come in Q2. But if on the other hand, we do something like this where maybe Bitcoin comes down or you know maybe it gets back a bounce back up to the 40 to 50 range or the you know the maybe 45k 40k something like that and then it comes back down you can easily see how how the bottom could still be a few months away uh sorry I'm not really sure that'd be kind of crazy if we went back in time but you can see how it how it still could be a few months off if if yeah because a lot of times these these bottoming processes they take a while they don't happen overnight just like it doesn't, we don't get to major parabolic moves overnight. You don't get to bottoms overnight either. It takes a while, okay? So I I understand that a lot of people are upset right now. I understand that you have all sorts of emotions. We've all had them before. I, I experienced the same set of emotions in 2014, um, and, and it sucked. I experienced the same emotions in uh, the March 2020 capitulation, and it sucked, okay? It was awful, but... We stuck through because the fundamentals haven't changed. Bitcoin is still Bitcoin. And the only thing that's changed is, is basically this cyclical behavior of, of people FOMOing in and then and then and then running for the hills after it, right? So, you know, FOMO in in early 2019 and then run for the hills in late 2019 and early 2020. FOMO in in early 2020 and then run for the hills in March of 2020. FOMO and going into this parabolic rally. And then you can see it. it's just the same process over and over and over again. So I look at the market right now and I say, you know what? Bitcoin is bearish. That's just what it is. I'm not going to tell you it's going to go to 60K next month because I don't think it's going to. And I mean, I, I've said for the last five months that I don't think there's any reason Bitcoin's going to have a parabolic Q4. And I don't think it's going to have a parabolic Q1. Did I think we were going to go back down to 35k this quickly? To be honest, no, I did not. It caught me off guard. Right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It caught me off guard. But I will say that if you, you know, if you stick around, then um, we will see. We, we should see better times, even if it means things need to get worse before before they get better. All right. So we are now down approximately 50%. So uh, this has been a, a fairly sizable pullback for, for Bitcoin here. We're talking about a, a 40, 48.5% move to the downside. But if you take it to the wick, it's about a 50% drop. 
Okay, so, so Bitcoin has officially retraced 50%. Obviously, you know, we went to 69K and then Bitcoin went to 34, 34 times 2, 68, obviously. So obviously we have gone down below 50%. So with that in mind, you know, and, and thinking about this resistance band now and not, not acting as a support band necessarily, but acting as a resistance band, we need to have the right mindset as we navigate the next few months. So what I, what I think people should do is, is think about this area right here as, as major resistance, okay? And there will likely be times where we will go up to it, and every single time we go up to it, we'll try to get above it, okay? And we'll make videos. We'll say, look, guys, we're gonna try to get above it, but it's gonna be a fight. And eventually we'll get above it, and eventually we'll hold the line again, and eventually we'll trend higher, but it's gonna be a process. And, and again, my general opinion on it is, is we'll likely see some type of a, of a bottom within the first half of this year. That's what, I, that's what I'm generally thinking. I could be wrong. <laughs> People need to know that. I, I've been wrong on plenty of things. Um, but one of the reasons why I think we're further along is because, you know, if you go look at things like the 200-week SMA, which we don't necessarily have to go to, or the 100-week SMA, which we also don't necessarily have to go to, by the time we approached the 100-week SMA back in 2018, it was already November, okay? So the bottom was just about one month away. We're approaching the 100-week SMA. Now, the 100-week SMA is at around, you know, it's, it's just below 32,000. Let me get the exact number so I can tell you. 31,642. So the 100-week the SMA isn't really that far off, okay? And so if we, if we get to the 100-week moving average... We might, you know, maybe we'll, maybe, maybe that could be a bottom, right? Maybe 31, maybe it'll, we'll just have some type of double bottom, but I don't think you should expect that. I think you should basically plan for the worst and be pleasantly surprised if it, if it doesn't go that low. So we're already getting close to the 100 a week. The weekly RSI is at levels that we typically only see when we are, when we're just a few months away uh, at most from a bottom. Okay. So if you look at like the relative strength index, normally Normally, when it gets this low, uh, where we are, where we are right now, at around 36 or so, normally at that rate, we're, we're we're getting to a bottom within the next few weeks, or maybe the next two to three months. Like this one, it took about it just took another month in 2018. In 2014, it took um, about four months, and so that's why I think it, it's reasonable to expect this to potentially happen in Q1, or let's say maybe Q2 seems seems like. A more a more conservative a more conservative um, target. So uh, I'm generally that's what I'm generally thinking right now is is um, getting some type of a reset here, and then we can get some type some type of a move higher. Uh, but it's going to be a process, and I understand that people are upset. All I can do is try to help you from this point in the market and try to tell you how I've navigated it before, and and it, it's brutal when you're here, but. We always look back and, and wish we bought more. And that's a cliche thing to say. I'm not going to tell you to buy the dip. I'm going to tell you to do what makes your own risk tolerance uh, viable. If, if you already have a lot of Bitcoin and you can't afford to put any more into the market because you're worried it's going to go down, then just hold off, right? Just don't buy any for a while uh, and, and recognize that if it goes up, you'll be happy with what you have, okay? So right now, the weekly RSI is as low as it's been since March 2020. We could take out that low. I mean, we, we could take this out if this selling pressure does not subside in the next week or two. We could easily take these levels out. So be prepared. We'll be here every step of the way. Every step of the way we'll be here. And recognize that the downside risk is there. Okay, the downside risk is there. You can see what it is. You can see what the downside risk is. We've been there many times before. We've even wicked below the 200-week moving average before. So you can see what it is. It was the same downside risk back in, in the summer, and we didn't go there. And you know what? I made a video saying worst case scenario back in May of 2021, and then we went back up. I saw some comments sort of poking fun. Oh, you said it was going to go to the the the, the two hundred week SMA. No, I didn't. I mean, it's just it's just something you always have to consider, right? It, if you if you constantly say we can't go there, then eventually you're going to be disappointed. Uh, for instance, if you said we can never go there in July, all you'd have to do is wait a few months and we were back there. Okay, so let's not say we can't go there. It is definitely a distinct possibility. And currently it's it's right around just below $20,000. So please consider it a possibility. 
even if we don't go there. And then you can always poke fun at me later if we don't. Just please consider it as a possibility so that you can manage your risk accordingly. Um, and, you know, beyond that, I, I, I would just like to say, look, this this thing is going to be a nasty resistance band. And and we're going to get, we're, we're probably going to see it act as some pretty strong resistance um, a few times. It's always possible we repeat something like 2019 where we actually bounce off of the 100 week moving average like we did in 2019 come back above the bull market support band only to fall back below it like that's always a possibility so we got we have to consider that as as something that could play out as well and the point is to say you know once again is that you know it's easy it's easy for for you know people who have youtube channels or, or twitter accounts to chase clout by by making predictions and and them having to having them turn out to be true but in reality no one knows what will happen in this market. Absolutely no one. And what you need to do is you need to think about every possible scenario and how you would navigate every possible scenario. If you can't navigate every possible scenario, then you're not doing yourself any favors. Let's be clear about that. Um, so anyways, why don't we wrap it up there? I mean, this has been a, a, enough of a, of a pep talk. I'm sure enough you guys are done with this at this point. But the 20-week SMA and the 21-week EMA now range from 47K up to around 51k those are the levels we need to break whenever we break those we can call it the bull market support band again right we can call it that until that time i think it still is going to operate as a as a bear market resistance band whether it lasts another three weeks whether it lasts another three months uh, remains to be seen but as i said before we'll be here every step of the way thank you guys for tuning in make sure you subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys next time bye